Islam McMaster was born in 1917 in Saskatchewan. And in 1922, when his father planted three times and got nothing, his father decided to take a relocation package and move his family of five back to the Trenton area. So in 1929, he now moves his family of nine to the village of Brighton. And once he gets into the village of Brighton, then the boys in the family start looking around for part-time jobs. And Basil was 12 at the time, and Basil had jobs mowing grass, picking stones off the right-of-way for the Grand Trunk, of which he got 50 cents a, a day, hoeing tomatoes, picking apples, snipping beans in a factory, pumping gas, he gets a job at the Peaviners, and he's making 20 cents an hour. And at 85 hour week, he comes home with $17, which he gives to his mother, and then he goes and he cuts some grass so that he has some money to go to church. Basil started high school in 1932, and this was a huge honor. First of all, you had to pass your grade eight entrance, which was a three-day exam. Um, then you had to supply your own books, supply your own transportation, and be able to afford to pay for all your examination fees. And Basil remembered taking those junior matric exams. In order to get to grade 12, you had to pass these exams. You paid $1.50 per subject, and if you passed, you got your grade 12 diploma. Basil went on to uh, Peterborough the next year to teach his college, but he said, he told me that in 1937, only three of the 40 people passed the senior matric and got grade 13. So Basil graduated from Peterborough Teachers College, June 6, 1937. He had, a, he had two loans, which totaled $160 for his education to pay back. But he wasn't upset because he had acquired a, a job come September in the counties, one-room school, for $650 a year. But unfortunately, that night, news came that Ernest, Basil's father, died in a car accident in, uh, in Napanee, leaving his mother with five children still in school. So that summer, Basil got a job at the hotel, Presque Hill Hotel, as the bellhop. Now, this was a really good job because it had tips he would get $25 a month through and board for working at the hotel, and plus his tips. So at the end of 10 weeks, Basil had earned $60, and he had tips of $60, so he had made $120. Basil would have many teaching jobs over his career, but he finished up the last 10 years teaching in the new native schools in the north. He came back to Brighton and moved to 33. Three Division Street and turned his interest into history and of course was one of the first people to help with Save Our Heritage organization and trying to furnish that house was quite a quite an undertaking. He spent hours in the library with the microfilm going over the old enzymes that was the local paper that was run by the Lant family from 1871 until 1955. In the mid-90s, he would take those notes and he would take his experience from moving into Brighton at, 19, at 1929. And he ended up with seven tapes about his memories and his notes that he had accumulated. He was really good at sharing and um, insisted that I listen to his tapes. So needless to say, Basil and Jim had a, a lot of content in Presque Hill Volume 3. He did two books, self-funded books. One was on the town hall that was destroyed in the tornado of, of 73. And the other was on the hops, which was an industry that ran from 1860 to 1890. He was really... Um, instrumental in building the carriage shed at Proctor House, and he certainly was a volunteer when the Proctor Simpson barn got, got moved. And because he watched that, that uh, performance, he decided that he wanted to move the hop kiln from Smithfield area down to Center Street, which was the far end of Memory Junction. 
So in History Week 2003, the hop kiln was opened with mannequins and displays and two outhouses. I've lived in Brighton all my life. I've watched it go from a village to a town in 1980 to the municipality that it is today. Um, I realized very early that there was nothing written in this time from 1900 to 1960. And the seniors invited me into their homes and they, they told their stories. And they would be so thrilled at what's going on today with the Brighton Digital Archives that they are not only recording it, but that it's available for so many people to see. I think this statement about living on a family farm applies also to living in the village of Brighton from 1900 to 1960. If you wanted to eat and you weren't sick, you were supposed to contribute to your family and your community and hard work and respect for others was what was expected. And that's the Brighton they remembered. Mm -hmm.